All right, Natasha, Sorry, take Sorry, I'm us still away. thinking about my sheep. I love them. <laughs> Where did you get them? A place down the street called Decor. Natasha I'll had... I'll show you before you leave. You're tuned in now to the Endless Honeymoon podcast and those dulcet tones that you've listened to are, of course... Oh, Adam Rapon. And Natasha Legero. And, of course, hi, I'm Moshe. Uh, we, we had Adam... Well, first of all, let's say Adam is... Uh, He's a Martian. Uh, I know him from astronaut. Stars on Mars. They've mm. been to Mars together. But Adam is a very accomplished Olympian who has... Figure skating legend. Medaled. Is that what you call it? Yeah. Okay. What else would you call it? <laughs> I don't know. Well, because think of all the people who are like, I've been to the Olympics. But they didn't get that gold, silver, or bronze. Do you kind of look down on those people? Like, Of course he does. Yeah, every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every day, I look at my medal and then I go. So many people don't have this. You've got to call. You do call a couple of them and just say, "I'm looking mm-hmm. at my medal." I medal. email. What, what are you up to? Wait, I'm surprised I can afford email. Where is the medal? <laughs> it's um. It's just so. It's in a, its box. Like it mm. came in a little box. It's in its box, but just like on a shelf. Do you, you don't ever put it on when you're like just wanting to feel powerful. <laughs> or like display it. Like imagine putting your Oscar in a box. You know what? It's just, I still, it's still surreal to have one. I don't know. And well, it feels so gauche to put it out. No, I don't think Here's- that's gauche at all. <laughs> I think it's normal. Go to a party. Should I warn it? <laughs> have you ever, you've been married oh, how wait. long? I've been married um, a year and a half. I was going to say, yeah. I do have a pet peeve of athletes who show up wearing the medal. I that get happens? it. That's a lot. But I guess the reason why I'm thinking about it is because we went on a backpacking trip this past week. This uh-huh. is in addition to camping. Oh. We spent the Are night. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, she went straight up like hardcore backpacking. No, no and, and I, way- almost, I almost knocked our kid off of a cliff. Like, it was not cool. It was just one night. That's why I did it. And the people told me it was one, it was one mile, but it was two. And it was just way, it was so much. But here's what I, I want to tell you. Not, it was her idea, by the way. I didn't even bring it up. The just past, but two It miles. was two miles each way. We spent the night, oh. but we had to carry everything on our backs. And so at one point I was lifting, it was almost like our spacesuit in Mars. And then I was lifting the stuff and, it, and my, my head was crooked and it was switchbacks. And I like almost just went off a cliff because I wasn't looking ahead of me. I was just looking down. But <laughs> so, but here's why I'm saying this. And here the, I know that's not a, a backpacking for one night. You can't really compare that it's to winning the Olympics. Being an, a, an Olympic <laughs> no, it's medalist. similar. No, it's, so it's similar because to get to the Olympics, it's two miles one way. <laughs> and then it is two miles back. No, but wait, let me tell to, you what. You have what. to hump all your stuff in, don't you? Everything. <laughs> yeah. The past three days, I've kind of, it was the hardest thing I'd ever done besides Mars because that was really hard too. Mm-hmm. For the past three days, I've kind of felt like I could do anything. Interesting. Like, oh, yeah. I, like something about Did the- Did you know that four miles could make you feel <laughs> invincible well but this was a very hard four miles because it was like with with stuff on my back but Up i'm just cliff. saying i mean it was it was if, pretty hard if i had a medal like that i just feel like something like i even had a picture of us backpacking frame today because i was like this is good for me to see that i was able to do that <laughs> So if I had a fucking Olympic medal, I, I would just want to keep it around. And this just is as a reminder that out. anything's possible. Like I have it out. You know what I have though? It's like I have something from the opening ceremonies, like in a box. Okay. That's like out Display. that you can see. Yeah. Okay, I like so that. So you did human excellence, Natasha, and the possibility <laughs> of potential. I was gonna ask if you and your husband have ever made love with you wearing the medal. I think that's a more interesting <laughs> question. <laughs> It is, and um, the answer is no. Mm, Damn what it. A missed because it's actually really heavy. Oh, <laughs> and, oh and for you, having sex is like, hike, is like hiking two miles for Natasha. It's, it's the hardest thing you've ever done. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> you know, I listened to the episode of like Rhonda saying that her husband has like a PhD in her body. Mm. She's obsessed with her husband. I know, and I was like, I don't even have a GED in my own. <laughs> like, I don't. <laughs> what is going on over there? Well, a lot of fucking, I think, is, yeah. what's, is what's happening. Well, well, it has been really fun getting to know you on Stars on Mars, mm-hmm. uh, which is still on Fox. Adam, I, I got... Against all odds. <laughs> it's still on Fox. Well, I, my, you know, I, I was gone after four episodes, I think, mm-hmm. but... Um, you were deemed unnecessary. I was deemed... <laughs> Adam, you're oh, still, yesterday still my, in the my game. daughter's like, Mom, why did those two men have to help you up the hill? <laughs> <laughs> she did just she thinks that's that? so funny. So well, she was like excited you were coming over because I was like, oh, that's one of the people. Like she was into the show. Did you enjoy your experience on Mars? Um, 
Yeah, he that, did. Yeah. I had fun. I did have fun, but I had fun in the beginning. I had fun mostly because Natasha was there. I get it. I'm a lot of fun. brother. I get it. That's that's the life I lead every day. That's why I'm here. Every day I'm on lockdown, <laughs> deter- determining whether or not Natasha is mission critical. critical right. Our <laughs> so far, so good. Yes. Yeah, so In terms of making the daughter, she was 100% mission critical. She was. Yeah. yeah. yeah we couldn't have done it without her. Well, I really got to know Adam and I felt like they didn't really use a lot of our conversations, which I'm happy with. I had no idea what they were going to use. Like, you know, Tom from the Vanderpump show, you know, they used a lot of his stuff because he was doing, you know, he was like eating celery Mm -hmm. and um, really really, important (laughs) things. Really like anything he did, they wanted it on camera. Uh Um, But I did want to say one of the things that you told me that I think about every day and we can also cut this out if you don't want to put it in, um, is that like you because I, you know, wake up every morning with my kid and I just always have this vision of you telling me <laughs> so scared <laughs> that I know we were in this like weird reality <laughs> but that you would wake up every morning and when you were young you would take care of your siblings and mm-hmm. you would get them done early enough like with their lunches and everything that mm-hmm. then you would beg your mom to take you to the ice skating rink yeah and that's where you would practice that is true I so you know in the mornings I asked my mom if I could go skating in the mornings and she was like there's just too much I'm the oldest of six kids um, there was a lot of fucking going on yeah. there, mm-hmm. right? Oh, you now you know my language. Now <laughs> you know my love language is just fucking. Like, yeah, okay, I'm interested. I was graying out while you guys were talking about. I just kind of wanted about, to like get back no, to me. Yeah. yeah, the Olympics and and hiking and your met all. Uh, I was out, but when you said fucking, I tuned back in. Go right. ahead, I'm listening. And so my mom was like, you know, it's just it's too early. There's too much to get done. So I would um, I brainwashed all my younger siblings and I'd wake them up at like four o'clock in the morning, and I would say, you're late for school. Like we need to get everything together right now. And I'd have them all like. It was a lie. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. My success is based on lying. (laughs) But it also comes from like you probably just saw you had such big dreams for yourself. You know, like I feel like my daughter is like if something's not fun, she's like out. Well, I was also like that. But I think this was the first thing that I actually liked mm. so i wanted to do it all the time i, I mean i wasn't really thinking of my future at 10. did you right. just start you skated you know that i'm a medalist in figure skating as i well. do know that we've talked yes, about this yeah, but i don't know that the listeners know i i was a uh um, I, I feel like you couldn't even like like do like a, a one-time round all i'm saying is whatever the first thing they ever put a, a medal for like the first like you, your first week is done let's do a medal mm-hmm. thing I have one from Monty at Iceland in Berkeley, California. Wow. That was my coach. It's a famous rink. <laughs> is it really? No. No. <laughs> it is to me. I was where I got uh, rejected and thrown out of a birthday party because I was not invited to the birthday party and I found an invitation on the floor and I came anyway with a gift for the guy. I brought him a gift and then he kicked me out. Anyway. Adam, Wait, how old were you? When I you... was in seven, six, oh sixth grade. Oh my God, that's so Brilliant. It was a and it was, maniacal. It was a defining moment for me. <laughs> but uh, how did you? You just took a class and were like, "I'm good at this." Um, so I am. You can tell by looking at me, an all American kid, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I played like t ball and tennis. T ball is such a wreck. Like I, I had to sit through my hu- my <laughs> my, so my my brother's t ball is no, so it's dumb. so terrible. How would anyone get passionate about that? I no, I remember. So I have two stories about baseball, and one was like I obviously always struck out. Okay, everyone's jaw is on the ground, <laughs> and one time I got hit by a pitch, and I was like about to cry, and then they were like, "Take a base," and I was like, "What?" <laughs> and then I realized that if you get hit with the ball, you just take a base. And so I never struck out. But my dad was mad at me that I would get hit at least. You did it on purpose. Of, yeah. You just wanted to take a base. I didn't want to strike out. Okay. By the way, I just watched the Bad News Bears thinking it was a nice <laughs> movie for kids. I gathered the kids around and we all watched it. We had and like four like, kids and it opens like, with him like pouring whiskey into his beer. No, as- there's like a kid in there. There's a hard <laughs> F word, hard N word. I mean, like within the crazy. first 10 minutes of the, I'm like, wow, kids movies were extremely different in right. the 70s. Yeah, it was much harder. Yes, it, yeah. w- it was harder. Okay, so you would try to strike out right. or you would try to hide yeah, yeah sounds like my experience Beans. on stars on we call, mars we call it, oh yeah <laughs> i was just always trying to hide behind the camera <laughs> um and then i had the other story about baseball is i remember that i had this just brilliant idea that 
I would faint in the middle of a game and I'd have to be like <laughs> taken out. That is the most figure skating reaction to baseball I've ever heard. So it's I did so dramatic. find my place eventually. But I asked my mom, I'm like, what do people look like when they faint? And she was like, if you faint during the game, I'm going to leave you there. Oh, she could like see right through your little question. Why else would a Mother, seven-year-old ask? Mother, what does fainting look like on a baseball diamond? <laughs> <laughs> But so it, you weren't good at baseball. Have, but no. it could have prepped you for the, I mean, not that T-ball is, but, you know, just like sports in general. Like, like I told you, I, sport, it was never a thing for me to be in any kind of sports, although I wasn't swimming. But it was I like female everything. sports, male sports. Yeah. No, I did a little bit of everything. And then there was a birthday party that I went to. Um, mm. I didn't get thrown out of it. Oh, yeah. Well, you were Moshe, probably invited. if you invited. wouldn't have gotten thrown out of that birthday party at the ice rink, maybe you would have the bronze medal. <laughs> That's so true. It I could have been on Mars. I could have been you asked to go to been. Mars. I don't think I had an aptitude. I think it was like a special, like a pat on the back uh, medal. You know, I like don't a, think so. You think I had a, a real I think gift? That you had a <laughs> you knack can see it for in me. It. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're inspiring, and I'm so glad that wait. You're I want to know the origin Mars. story. Hold on. Oh, it's the origin story. Well, I want it. So then, okay. So you 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 fainted in baseball and got hit by a pitch. Not <laughs> so much. And then you you strapped on, and then you were like. I'm going to go to the most masculine of sports, right? skating. Because I am the most masculine of people. <laughs> so you strapped on the blades. Is that what they call them? I strapped them on, yeah. Strapped on the blades. And you go out there. Was there a moment? Oh, yeah. You... Was it like, oh, yeah. like a friend told me once she got on a horse. Like two people have <laughs> told <night>. me this. <laughs> two people have told <laughs> me they got a on a horse <laughs> and like their lives changed. They were like, oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, that's a getting on a horse. Well, I mean, I like that they were meant to be on a horse. Yeah, I've I mean, never been on a horse. One, I'm all, I've always been obsessed with that moment of, I think comedians have it to some extent too. It's like the first time you I get on it, stage, yeah. you go, oh, wow, I could do this. Did you have that? No. I'll no. tell you the moment of my life where I was like, oh, this is what I like doing. And it was at the Olympics. And I was just- Wait, doing, you were already, you went all the way to the Olympics <laughs> before you figured out you liked it? <laughs> it wasn't even the skating part. It was like when I was doing all the media stuff. When I was doing all the media mm. stuff and like, you know, I was just being an idiot to anybody who would ask me a single question. And I was like, oh, my God, I love this. The this part is that probably some people have a problem with. Like, yes. But that's so funny because now that I think about it, out of all the sports, if there is a glamorous, like I'm also performing, I'm wearing sequins, like it, that, it would be figure skating, right? Yeah. And it, I, does, it does have a, dr a drama to it. In, yeah. In a way a lot of you other pick sports a saw. Don't. I mean, it's like it really is a special You guys sport. are doing it's hardcore uh, rhythm gymnastics erasure right now, but I do hear what you're saying. What's rhythm? Isn't that that's the one with the ribbon? It is. And oh. they it has a drama to it, but I guess people don't pay enough attention no, to it. No, because there's just a lot of hoops and clubs and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yogurt yeah. not a lot of no one's wearing like sparkly outfits when they're luging so what, what is it called luge, luge. luge. <laughs> they're wearing the tight ones though they are they are very tight right but not like you know they don't have drama they don't have story i mean figure skating has storytelling to it it's it, like well, it's partly diana ross or something it's, it is yeah, a little it, it is, is a little it, it does have that vibe i love it, it in fact all the way to they they sometimes mandate how much and the way that it needs to be right I, that's i was hearing uh, i was just listening to a podcast about that famous uh, black french figure skater mm -hmm. woman that was like she was too aggro for them because they had these standards that she had to adhere to within the drama like the drama has r rigid boundaries in mm -hmm. some weird way right well okay she was amazing this french figure skater she was amazing she her skating though was atrocious <laughs> it was terrible but she's gorgeous she was doing all this technical stuff but she was just like running around the rink like she was driving a hess truck <laughs> and then she'd kind of stop in the middle and like shake her hips a little bit and, and then do like, some crazy move basically yes and so th and then like people would get scored over her she was also the only black girl skating mm. so like that's obviously it has its own challenges but there were people who were like very beautiful skaters and they would get scored higher. And she famously was second at a world championships and refused to stand on the podium. Ooh, so you don't the want to do that. Podium shot is first place, third place, and she's holding. Wait, why why would you refuse to stand on it? Because she thought she should have won. Mm. So mm. a podium at second place is embarrassing. For her. I have see. you you must have gotten second and third place at some points in your career? I did. What does that feel like? <laughs> Um, You've seen, this seems like a hard question for you. Right. It felt like. Does it feel um, great or does it feel awful? It feels great. Yeah. Your, your, your score. I mean, you're, you could also have not have anything. But there is that person out there that's like, if, if it's not everything, it's nothing. 
That's not you. No. You if were just something. His name, is, something. <laughs> his name is Lance Armstrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a call, I think, Moshe. <laughs> no. And it's Lance. But, <laughs> I'm sorry. I got another phone to pick Hey, here. whatever. Uh, grabble, grabble. Now, okay. Oh, you want to do a call? I have more questions for Adam because I'm a, I, I really am obsessed Don't with- Don't use up all his energy on like- No, his, I, have, I have endless <laughs> okay, okay. abundant so, amount. So Adam, when you, you were doing this press junket at the Olympics- Oh, that going, is cool. This is what I really want to do. So is the future for you, do you think is like you want to- be well, the, he also has one Dancing with the Stars. I don't know if you know that. Oh, interesting. And he has like done some research, a right? lightweight hosting yeah, career. Now. Do you know anything I've done, though, just to bring us to an even playing field? <laughs> he knows I mean, that you I, recommended some girl sleep with her brother <laughs> for... <laughs> right, I do know that. <laughs> um, no, but I think that... Yeah, I don't like know. talk show. That's that's yeah, the future. He, yeah, I like talk show. I love like stuff in the like comedy space. I think I'd like to do a little like. He's obviously gonna host. Be like you know. Yeah, I could see it in entertainment. It. Yeah, yeah I it just, was like a stepping stone. You don't want to be like an old that is athlete. So what a funny thing to like be one of the be absolute best in the world. That's something that's one of the hardest things to do on earth. But I wasn't one of the absolute best. Didn't you medal? Well, You're in the top point. Isn't that zero, the whole thing? Three percent. But you know, like I competed with somebody who's like maybe one of like the greatest athletes in our sport of like all time. So it was like I was never gonna win. Mm. And Who's the greatest one of all time? His name's Yuzuru Hanyu. Okay. I, can, I cannot. He was at that party. He's the one believe. who threw Moshe out of the <laughs> party. Yep. Yuzuru. Which is crazy. And what I can't believe is that you didn't know that. I mean, when he said one of the greatest of all times, I'm like, oh, he's talking Yuzuru right here. Dude, my, this, my nemesis. Yeah, my yes, figure skating currently. nemesis. <laughs> Um, are you still com competing? Um, mm. Like, do, what do you skate at all? I do. I sometimes I'll you like. Better text me. I want to bring my daughter. Oh, are you kidding? I a hundred percent. I want we her to like to see go. excellence. You know, like we don't even have to. I just want her to watch. Okay. And Done. how often do you skate? Do you um, care about it anymore? I do it only to like um, get in a caloric deficit uh-huh and so it's helpful you burn a lot of calories um but i don't skate too often i do like a little choreography for like some of my friends <laughs> students you know a lot of people would say i do it to get exercise but i love that you said you do it to get a caloric um <laughs> deficit yeah because it feels pathological and it feels i am pathological. Yeah. No, but, but he was telling me like a lot of times for these uh you know you've you got to weigh in so he would kind of have it down to a science like he could have you know certain amounts of food and y you know I was I, now like being on the other side of it. I realized like the intensity that I had around it. And I always thought like, I'm not the intense one, but I knew I weighed exactly 147.7 pounds. <laughs> like, <laughs> I guess that was a little bit intense, maybe. But you're not like that now. No, I have no idea what I. You're not weighing that now. No. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm 20 pounds heavier than Hell I was when no. I was. Yeah. Hell and you're no. too skinny zero. and fit. 20 I was. Much so, you were like kind of anorexic, I, but I was it was just I was like, and we can't be like top heavy at all, so like I had no that like was, string bean arms. My problem was always bottom heavy, that's why I didn't go further with figure skating. Wait, the, why can't you be top my, heavy? My center of gravity, hold on, I'm just in the middle of this <laughs> I big actually want to hear this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my center of gravity was really, I was always being pulled. They, my coach always said I was being pulled to the ground in a way you've never your coach? seen Monty, you, uh, Monty from Iceland, uh -huh. uh, Yuzuru's um, trainer as well, right? And he said that my center of gravity, even for an eight year old boy, was being pulled <laughs> to the ice in a way he'd never seen before. Uh -huh. And I would say, that's just how we hang. You right. know, that's how we hang heavy in right. Oakland. That's what I told them, you know. So why, Adam? Why, what? Why can't it be, why can't you have like muscles? Oh, because, so everything, like basically your upper body, when you, I was like a single skater, so it's different if you're a pair skater, like those guys need upper body strength. But you don't want any extra weight. When you're doing your little pirouettes. When you're doing like the, the jumps, you don't want any like, because mm. if your shoulders are wider, it's, it will, you know, you'll rotate slower. And when you're doing these like programs, it's really exhausting. And if you're heavier, it'll be harder, but you mm. need to find a weight that like you're healthy at. Mm -hmm. What was your big move? Triple Lutz? It was a triple Lutz and I put <laughs> both you know my much? arms over my head and it was, it's called a rip on Lutz still Whoa. to no! this day. You have your own Lutz? Mm -hmm. Wait, how crazy. do you know about Lutz? I just, 
that was the only one I, I, I knew axel is that another thing that is yeah yeah, yeah. Tri- it's it's called the rip on lutz lutz and, and anybody who does like a jump with their both arms over their head they always just call it like a rip on i love I, the flair i love Hello. the flair i, I also mean love i want to invent a move i also love the humility where you're like well you know i wasn't really one of the best in the world there is a move <laughs> named after no me. because i had to like come up with like <laughs> tricks and like smoke and mirrors to like stand out mm. So, okay, all yeah. right. Desperation leads to innovation. That's yeah. so cool that that you realized that you had like it, it, stage all, presence, it, and like, that was a part of all it. All clicked because, like, in my training group, I worked like insane, but I liked being insane, and I also was like the class clown. I was always the person that like entertained people. I was always like doing that stuff, and I thought it was like my way of like relieving stress, which it was. But when I was like doing it like over and over, I was like, oh my God, this is like the best version of myself. Mm. And I'm like, isn't that crazy? Like how you're at amazing. the Olympics and- Right. But also how amazing to get to feel that. And it's like, amazing. And how, and, and like, just like getting back to that. Like, I feel like right now it's been hard for me, like being a mom and, you know, not, not knowing exactly what I want to focus on. And just to have a feeling that you're like the best version of yourself. That's just so powerful. That's really cool. And to be able to, because I'm sure there's been times where that is how I felt, but I will sometimes diminish it. Mm -hmm. To be able to really feel it is so important because then you know how to, you know what it is. Right. But you know, like even like in entertainment, like in sports, there's only one thing, like it's the Olympics. So like you don't, you feel like, oh, there's so many opportunities and there are, but it's like, you're just going towards one thing. But in entertainment, it's like, you can create a space for yourself. So that's so like, it feels like too like over sen- sensory overload a little bit. You're mm-hmm. like, well, what do I want? And then you're like, well, I like if, if I have a TV show, like it'll only go for a few seasons. And then like, what do you do after that? Right. Like it's. Well, I'm also obsessed with the idea. I think I really was not being sarcastic when I said I'm obsessed with human, like sort of moments of of breakthrough human potential Mm -hmm. i've i've interviewed a lot of athletes and i've interviewed a lot of like best in the world types in in my life and and there are certain things that they have this time limit on them Mm. and that's and figure Mm. skating is one of them um and it's it's interesting to me that that thing of like i'm i'm the best in the world at something and then i know that i'm looking at the at the finish line to that and mm-hmm. it's going to be young i'm going to mm-hmm. be young when i get there so to have the opportunity to get really far in something with a hard time limit like that and in that moment of human potential realize actually what you well, really your were supposed gonna to be. do yeah. your pivot <laughs> and that it is even more meaningful to you than uh, maybe i don't know if it's more meaningful but that it's as meaningful to you as the thing that got you there is such a lucky sort of bl- sort of bl- life blessing that i think that's really cool and, and and a lot of people don't get that a lot of people at the end like baseball players I always think about them they get to the end of their career and then they just then what do they do? They buy yeah. a tobacco farm and they just are on a tractor going, well, the I had dream. a dream. Yeah. <laughs> well, you never know what can happen because that woman, Jenna Lyons, who was the, the CEO of J. Crew, is now on The Real Housewives because she said she wanted to do it on a podcast. Mm. So really? Let's put it out there. Well, there's also that I was just I don't know if you've seen the Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary. I have. It's so great. Yeah. He's so charismatic and he's the best in the world at, at a athletic thing. And then he's like, I'm going to be the best in the world at the most <laughs> unlikely thing <laughs> I definitely should not be on camera. And then he becomes the biggest movie star in the world. And, and, and you know what Moshe told me about it that was so cool is that he was like, he had enough money to say no to all the corny stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which is really powerful. And then he becomes the biggest movie star in the world. And he's like, no, nah, I'm money a, from his other I will stuff. run California. And then he becomes the governor. And yeah. then he's 75 now and he cheated on his wife. And he's like sitting in his mansion in Telluride or whatever. Right, and he's with going, the two ponies that walk in and out of the house. <laughs> he's like feeding his donkey, going, is this all there is to right. life? Well, you know, because when he sat on a horse, his exactly. home has changed. That's right. Yeah. I only have sheep. So anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. Okay, I, I all right. Well, okay, we're going to do a call. This is very stimulating, but let's, let's see if we can give some of this energy to Tamara. From Montana. Speaking of sitting on a horse, I guarantee Tamara... Is on a horse. Is on a horse right now. (laughs) Hey, Tosh. Tosh, I'm all alone. You ever feel alone? Maybe you need somebody to talk to? Well, we want to recommend Talk Space to you. There's never a better time than right now to start taking your mental health seriously. Whether you suffer from anxiety or obsession or compulsion 
or depression, Talkspace has a licensed therapist that you can sign up online with and get a personalized match for in about 48 hours. It's super convenient. You can have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your own home. You don't have to drive. The barrier to entry to therapy has never been lower and Talkspace's quality has never been higher. They can help with any challenge you've got. It's secure and private. I really recommend it. I just started seeing someone myself and I'm feeling free. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $80 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash honeymoon. To match with the licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash honeymoon and get $80 off your first month and you can show your support for our show. That's Talkspace.com slash honeymoon. Can you see okay with, from the lights? Tamara. I can see okay. perfectly. Can you hey, hear Tamara. us? I can. Hi. Hi. Have you ever sat on a horse? Uh, I have. Yeah. And what did you feel? What did you feel when you first mounted it? <laughs> Mostly fear of her, how big and powerful it was. That sounds wrong. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. No, it right. sounds correct. They are huge. They are big, bulky boys. Well, Tamara, it's as you know, Natasha, Moshe, and our friend Adam Rapon. Hi. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. How can we help you? Uh, well, um, so my husband and I um, are considering kind of taking life on the road and living in an RV a little bit. Um, so, and wondering your thoughts on that. So he's recently started taking healthcare uh, travel assignments. So they're three month long assignments um, and getting back and forth to rural Montana to visit uh, can be tough. So um, we're thinking about, um, I'm thinking about switching it up and going kind of remote with work and joining him um, mm. and wondering if you think we're crazy. Well, I already know Adam thinks you're crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I adore you, but I, you <laughs> would be living my worst nightmare. <laughs> my husband actually threatens this <laughs> and he's like, we should do, he wants to do it so bad. Maybe he'll come visit you. I mean, sure. he wants yeah. to do this. Yeah. He Your wants- worst nightmare would be to leave rural Montana. Yeah. Because I love stay- it so much. Yeah. <laughs> it's so you. It's <laughs> so me. I'm so Montana. <laughs> but yeah, living in an RV, it does sound. How how big of a space are we talking? That's a good question. Well, so we don't actually have one yet. So that would be, we would, you know, um, so we don't, yeah, we would be. We but would I think, one. I think Adam's question is aspirational. How big of an RV are you talking about buying? Is it a gigantic house on wheels or is it a little class B? Now, you, obviously the expert here is going to be me. I'm withholding comment until the end. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. No, we're looking at decent size, like travel trailers with extendable things and stuff. So, that you know, we have our own space. Potentially, I have a little office space and things. But uh, but yeah, something probably towable. Um, so, yeah, you know, th- hearing you like the one way I could get through this, I think, would be to like document it. To like, because sometimes sure. like for me to be creative, I need to like be really um, uncomfortable. You know, like I yeah. can't say like you know, creativity always comes when I'm like in my comfort, you know? So I I think that for me, I would have to have some kind of like other thing, like I'm going to take pictures or I'm going to document this or do something because I just think it's incredibly hard to do something like this. And you know, what motion I will do is try to like, you know, I I knew it was a problem with how messy he was on our last trip in the RV. And so I made like such a big deal out of it. And I like (laughs) talked to the couple's therapist about it in front of him. And I was just like, I'm so scared to go. And like he made such an effort and it really did make it doable. And, you know, if I didn't have a kid, I probably wouldn't be open to this. But I do think it's good for like a very spoiled child to have to like (laughs) go (laughs) really rough time in nature, at least. (laughs) Right. So I don't know for me, you know, I I, I can imagine myself doing something like this if I actually I I, I wouldn't do it for a year, though. I think uh, my real advice is you should just fuck it and do it. Because I think if you're thinking about it, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're just not going to like it. And then you I don't know if you're like planning on selling or getting or like moving out of where you're living now. But we're planning to keep our we have a home. Then just fuck it. I think just do it. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? I spend so much of my life cleaning and I'm just like always (laughs) totally unrelated to what we're talking about. In a a van, (laughs) van, there's not.
not as much cleaning. Mm. You know, no, like there's I, some freedom right, to that. Yeah. Like I, I, you know, like I, I feel like there's just always like laundry and this broke and there's just like, so, I mean, that's going to happen in your van too, but it, it's just, there's right. something like more simple about it. And I could see wanting some relief from that. And sometimes when I do go camping, Adam, you won't understand this, but you come back and it's like, things do feel a little more simple. You know, it's right. like, maybe I don't need. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Weren't you at a hotel at the end of your camping trip? I mean, yeah. yeah but <laughs> did you I, how things many, were more How simple? many nights did you no. spend in an RV, Adam? I spent nine. like nine. No, no, Natasha looked around at the end of our camping trip and she looks around. She goes, you know, it's all so simple. There's only four seasons, just like this hotel that we're staying in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tamara, I'm team Adam all the way because I, it comes back to our conversation earlier. Like, not everybody has like this easy portal into like destiny, right? Mm. And there's so many versions of a boring, regular life that if there's a part of your, your gut that's saying, I'm going to have an adventure, I'm always, always pro. Like, we watched this documentary called Maiden Voyage, which is great, about the youngest girl ever to sail around the world on her own. Mm. She was like 16 years old, and she did a solo sail around the world by herself. And as a parent, I was like, this is the my nightmare, because you're like saying goodbye to this child and hoping everything will work out. But as a human being, like walking in the world, looking at how, how just rote life can sometimes feel, I'm like... Yes, you let your daughter go. Yes, you let Adam, little Adam go go do figure skating lessons because the possibility of human greatness is there. There is no world in which you jump into this RV and don't have at the least, even if it's a nightmare, um, a, a, a year or two that you look back on on your deathbed and go, now that was a fucking adventure. Now, I know you live in rural Montana, so probably every day is an adventure of slaughtering sheep or uh, <laughs> wrangling cattle or whatever. But I just feel like there's no way that you don't look back on this and go, even if it sucks, that you don't look back and go, man, I'm so glad I did that with my life. I'm a yes. I'm a yes, too. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a yes. Yeah, a you yes. should just do it. Yeah. And I feel like this is what our lives should be. Yeah. We right. should just like have an idea and do it. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. We don't have kids and this is stuff like this is like why we decidedly chose not to have children so we could do stuff like this i can pack up my chihuahua and take him anywhere so yeah they're so portable uh, yeah and the other beautiful part is if you're on the road in a nondescript vehicle you can acquire a child in the the trip <laughs> just grab one and Perfect. go to the next state you know i think you'll be uh, that's my real advice to you right all right tamara well i think we really helped you you're already you're already like a 80% there. Yeah, I think. You're, you're, you're ready. Just you're ready do, to it. do it. Absolutely. Put your stuff in some storage sort of thing. And yeah. I had this thought while I was camping. Adam, you're going to love this thought because uh, you're going to think it's ridiculous. Right. But Unless it was maybe I shouldn't be camping. <laughs> I don't know if I love it. See, this. my soul is him, but I'm just trying but to my be husband agreeable. Is him. <laughs> but but, but my your soul mate is me. <laughs> and so camping, you will go. But this was my thought while camping. Camping is, you're going to hate this, Adam. It is, it is actually luxury in a weird way. Mm -hmm. It's the ultimate. It is, in fact, hedonism. Nature is like Nature maximum is, hedonism. Nature is hedonism because the only reason you go is because it's pretty. There's no other mm -hmm. reason to be there. It's not really. I mean, unless you work in rural Montana and, and you're you're you run no, Yellowstone. Pe people go there to practice target shooting. There's that too. You can <laughs> shoot ski, but in but camping and things like that, it's really just to go have a beautiful experience. And to me, that is a version of luxury. It's a harder version of luxury. Mm -hmm. Obviously, paying for luxury makes it easier, and 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 it's it's superior in some ways too. But there's something about nature that is pure pleasure based, and I and that's what I love. About I it. understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I really, I promise you, I'm hearing you. I'm just not listening. Yeah, yeah. Wait, would that work? Can I say that to him? <laughs> I'm hearing you. I am not listening. <laughs> but definitely the volume is registering yeah. in my eardrums. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, you're right. Yeah. I, I could, I feel I, that I could take you to a, to a, a, a place in nature and he you fucking half time lives in Finland. Like, yeah, right. like what are you beautiful... talking about? We have a cottage there, but it's it's a cottage. It's not a tent. Are you when you say camping, 
Can I'm not I just get a clear definition of, is it tent? <laughs> There's a spectrum. There's a spectrum of we camping. We did tent camping. That's when I almost killed my daughter and myself. Okay. That was I'm for one night. I'm surprised your daughter didn't try to kill herself. <laughs> I, a tent? There is a spectrum, Adam. I could see and the stars, it goes though. All that was the cool. It goes all the way from tent camping, which has its own charm, which I understand isn't for everybody, all the way to a cabin in Finland looking That's over a fjord. That's not camping. In a way Going it is. Going to his cabin is in not camping. In a way camping. it is. In a way. In my way it yeah. is. <laughs> All right, Tamara, <laughs> goodbye and good luck. Okay, thank you, Tamara. Get good luck. RV. Thank you guys so much. Okay, okay, bye-bye. Bye. Adam, I do have a question for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Natasha offhandedly mentioned, like, okay, I'm going to give you the full context. My grandfather built a cabin oh in, in Mendocino. Okay. And it's been there since oh, the Oh, like 60s. the farms. What? Well, Mendocino, Mendocino Farm. Yes, much like the farm. Yeah. Yeah, everything we'll, we'll reference everything back to West Hollywood for you. Um, <laughs> it's much like the farms, the sandwich shop Mendocino Farms. There's a county in Northern California in the Redwoods that my grandfather built a cabin in. And I often say to people, and mm-hmm. I'll say it to you, okay. if you and your husband ever want to go He's on a He's just saying this because I told him you said we could no, go to his cabin. That's what I'm getting to. If you <laughs> and your husband ever want to go on a rugged adventure, there's a cabin in Mendocino that you're welcome to go visit. You, it's It's... It's uninhabited, and I'll tell you where it is, and I mean it. Now, when you offhandedly said to Natasha on Mars... I didn't offhandedly say this. Okay. I said it full, like, broad-chestedly. <laughs> you said it with gusto? <laughs> yes, and I meant it. If you got, Would you guys ever really go? A thousand percent. Oh, yeah, done. Is it real, though? It's uh, it's never been more real. Oh. I told you. Yeah, it's I'm, I'm very just real. Because sure. sometimes people go, oh, I've got a great place here. You should check it out. And then they do go, like, please never email me. But we're, okay. <laughs> but if we plan our trip to Finland. Yes. We're in. Is your husband Finnish? Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with Ismo, the Finnish comedian? Yes, I am. He's good. He's really He's funny. very good. We should have him on the podcast. We should have him on the podcast. We'll have him and your husband on to have a fin <laughs> Oh, they would love each Wait, other. Is your husband the most happy person you've ever known? No. Because oh, aren't they Finnish supposed to be are, so happy? Well, I know Finns, like, when they find out every year for like a hundred years in a row that they're the happiest country, they're like, it can't be it this can't be good. Us. <laughs> this is as good as it gets. And I think it's... It, it, it put, turns them into a, a depression spiral. Right. <laughs> they're slowly getting sadder and sadder. It's, I, that's, it's just based on like the... Ease with you, the ease with which you can make it through life. life. Interesting. Have you ever thought about moving to Finland? Well, okay. I kind of want to be, be a big star, honey. He doesn't. That's need true. That. You I, could do, host uh, Finland's Got Talent. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Sure Answer lucrative. the question. <laughs> yeah, it's all sled, <laughs> sled based. Like, well, what I do is I grab big log and I throw it in air. Is that my Finnish accent? Not it's, very good. That's a. T- I don't even like. That's a. It's a really tough accent to copy. Is he for real, like, Finnish, like, like, yeah, country, full like has an Strapping, yes. blonde, probably can, like, pl- be a plumber, but also knows a wine list, right? Yeah. All those people are, like, so... Oh, they're so superior. I went to Norway, and I was driving by these cabins, and I was like, this is, like, disgustingly Norwegian. Like, it would literally be a guy in knee-high galoshes reading the paper, smoking a pipe <laughs> on a rocking chair. Yeah. I'm like, get out of here. This is, like... <laughs> You're like, it's the cut. See, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, over. Yeah, Nobody's exactly. watching. What are you <laughs> exactly, performing? Exactly. Exactly. Your husband probably played with Santa Claus growing up and rode a reindeer oh, yeah, to school. Oh, yeah, I knew him with yeah. neighbors. Yeah, that's why they're all happy. They yeah. meet Santa. Mm-hmm. All right, Natasha and Adam, what do we want to do? We want to do another call? Oh, so we do this thing where people leave. Do you have Do you just secrets? have people on deck? Yeah, they're on deck. So basically people call in and leave. The, do you have good secrets, though? Okay. Oh, let's just, let, we can listen to two or three secrets, and then we can do the next call, and then we'll call it a night. Great. And then, so basically people will call in and leave a secret and we can make fun of them. Oh, God. <laughs> it's me calling. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm still on Mars. I need to get out of here right now. You know, um, I, Natasha wanted to like um, tap out, head back to Earth. And I had to beg her. I begged her and I was like, no, Natasha, I know how to be mission critical. Like you have to stay, please. Oh, I got Wait, a, no, no, you, but I, I got a call that night. And she go after she stayed, and she goes, I this, she was like upset. She's like, I decided, <laughs> I decided to be, and it was after you told her. She's like, I decided I to, st- to stay I and try her. to be mission critical, and I stayed. 
and Portia's really upset because <laughs> Richard has left and she said that Richard was her everything and <laughs> he was her rock and I was like Natasha I'm like sitting in like he with goes, the, you sound like you're in a cult yeah it was straight up I go this is a TV show I'm at home with our child like this none of this is real none of this matters it's a reality television program and she wasn't trying to hear that she's like the, the Hennessy is not here and I just think there's some there's some there's some fissures in the unit Okay, but what Adam was going to say is he taught me a trick, and this is why I was able to stay, was we, when we ha went on a mission. And if you haven't seen the show, it's so fun. It's hilarious. There's nothing like it. You should definitely check it out. Stars on Mars, on Fox, and subsequently on Hulu. So easy to watch. Um, and Adam told me, just make sure to talk a lot when you're doing your mission, and people will think you're doing something. Yeah, That is very funny. Because also, when I'm focused, I don't say anything. So I like <laughs> in this show, I'm like in the bottom every other week. I'm begging for my survival. Right. Did you find the missions as unbelievably difficult as Natasha did? He won okay. the Olympics. Obviously, he can carry more <laughs> weight than me. But no, I I have this like vision still where it was just like when we did the first one and it was like this big dust storm. Natasha was behind the camera at this point. And then I started to kind of fade back to where she was because in my mind, I thought they were going to go cut. We're going to reset. Because it was so, it was so crazy. It, it was just chaotic. But it just kept going. So then I just started to like touch things and just like look busy. I look, it was like a it's, sim character. It's one of those experiences when you're in when you're in it when you go, you assume a level of expertise and safety that you you assume it's being taken always. Like uh, you know, I've I've there's so many times like at Burning Man, for example, where I'm on top of some structure and I look down, and I go. I don't know the person that built this. I assume that I'm safe. Mm. And this, like, when people die That's on film sets, at burning it man. can definitely be common at burning, yeah. which you would, I can tell you would love. You would Adam. not. You would hate it. You would yeah, hate it. Although they do it's, have Finnish people that build saunas there. But that doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> <laughs> he can go have his own personal sauna. All right, let's hear a secret. Um, This is for the secret hotline. Um, <laughs> I love this one already. When I was in college, I went to college in Texas, and I was, I mean, I guess as a closeted, this homosexual, um, I <laughs> would often turn to the men seeking men section on Craigslist, and I ended up hooking up with this guy who was like, I was mm, 22 at the time, he was probably like, 20, 25 years older than I was. Um, and he was, like, handsome. He looked like the, uh, like the dad from Even Stevens, that Disney show. Um, but, like, <laughs> this guy, like, he worked out and stuff anyway. So he wasn't, like, hideous. And um, he had this huge house up on this golf course. Um, and so um, I ended up hooking up with him um, several times. He was really into, like, milking. Um which I don't want to get into it. But anyway, I like it was always like fun to just go and get like a like a HJ and um and look up this mansion thing at it. He had like a zebra skin rug. Anyway, so um <laughs> after a while I got a zebra kind skin of just rug. Didn't ever respond to his text whenever he would reach out. And so um I kinda of just would ignore it. And one time he was heading home from work and he sent me a text and he's like, Hey, I'm gonna get some water burger if you want something and come over, and I was like, we could get some chicken strips. Um, and so he got me some chicken strips. I went over there and got an HJ. Um, and then um, after that, whenever I would get hungry and um, and or horny, um, I would text him to see, I'd be like, hey, what's up? And he lived kind of close to like a Whataburger. It was close to the golf course. So um, <laughs> every time I went over there, he would just get me some Whataburger. So I was thinking about that today. I don't know if I was like prostitute sex working myself for chicken strips, but I'm, I mean, have you eaten a Whataburger? It's pretty good. <laughs> I kept thinking the secret was over. Uh, it, it was, <laughs> I just kept getting more depressing. <laughs> it, it was less I was secret. out at the golf course, like overlooking the golf course, having to give a hand job looking at a golf course. Go, Less go. a secret, more a more conf a, a long term confessional. It was just it was a biography. In fact, milking. I do know what that is. Do you know what that is? Well, Milky? once he gave 
the terminology of HJ, I figured clear. out what milking was. But I and then it, I remembered that I knew it. It's like milking, a specific kind of HJ, though. Isn't it like a table? I think there's a table. And then there's a dick <laughs> through the table. It's like a massage table. Oh, but my with God. Like, it's like being at... You guys don't know this, but there's a, <laughs> um, a place called in Pennsylvania where I'm from called Dutch Wonderland. Uh-huh. Sure we know it. <laughs> yeah. And um they had this porcelain cow that <laughs> had udders that you could milk. Nice. Yeah. Dutch Wonderland. This is very similar. So you don't to what think he was it getting, is, yeah. You think this guy was getting like sort of like a um, I think this is great business savvy, by the way. I'm uh, totally on board I'm for totally everything. I'm totally on board too. Yeah. I think over 30 I don't know. They, I mean, I don't want to Over 30 what? Well, I feel like I did stuff like $30 this. $30 at water. <laughs> <laughs> Over 30 chicken strips, it's, you're pushing it a little bit. Well, I don't know. I sometimes think this is It becomes sex work at 30 chicken strips because <laughs> of the value. <laughs> well, <laughs> Beneath that, it's a date because he's just buying you dinner. But at 30 chicken strips, you're getting paid to play. Mm-hmm. I have to say, like, I mean, I'm kind of, I think your 20s are all about this. Like... If you, you know, you're fucking, you're hungry, you're poor, you, someone helps you out. He's Why like, don't I solve all three? Hot enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the thing to remember is but that... But after 30, I don't know. Like, get your shit together. Maybe, you buy your own chicken strips. But maybe some people are like young at heart. I well, don't the know. thing is this guy, the old guy clearly got... He was into it. He was into totally. like buying this young man chicken strips and mm. then like those kind of weird paternal kind of I'm going to bring you over and then I'm going to stroke you off and with a full belly and empty nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I had sex with an older guy when I moved to LA mm-hmm. and then he gave me a car. And really? Then I felt what? weird about it. What kind of car? But I do remember it was re- it was a very old car. It was mm-hmm. like a Mustang and it was like wow. it was so sad. You it was got like a car? Wait, but hold on. It's it good was, though, Adam. I it, know why. It was from the. I, I wanted 80s. to give her a car, time and time and again. I'm like, damn, that was that was good. It was. I'm gonna from, get you a Yugo. It was a Mustang, <laughs> but it was from the 80s, and like the top didn't. It was a convertible, but the top didn't go up all the way. It was missing some mirrors. It was sad. Can't be choosers. Sure, sure. But I do remember. I will never forget this. When he gave me the car, I just remember thinking, and I thought same thing as this guy. I was like, he's cute. He's like kind of cute. Like mm. I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't gross me out. And, and I was bored or whatever. And I remember thinking when he gave me the car, I was like, this must be what Gwyneth Paltrow feels like. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, and actually, what? yeah, that is like, exactly what she feels it's like. It's like people, that's what I, and I always remembered like, People who have parents who support their lives, they never have to go f- fuck for chicken strips. Uh-huh. So it's really right. hard to judge oh, people. Oh, you meant, you meant <laughs> this is what Gwyneth Paltrow feels like in that someone has given me a car. Yes. I see. And Not- that like it came for nothing. Like, I, I see. Didn't, I mean, I guess she probably didn't have to fuck anybody for it. She probably Hopefully. also didn't drive a 1981 <laughs> Mustang with a broken convertible. Oh, my God. I had to go wait in line at the DMV every month to get like a new number because it wouldn't pass smog. And then I remember once they they took it away from me. I was on Vermont and they left me stranded at a bus stop because like I didn't have the right number on it. And they, they and I was like, can I just at least have my headshots? So, <laughs> so I had my box of headshots at like Vermont and third. And I was just like, they took the car away. What did they do with it? It was before Uber too. So they took it to the pound or, you know, the they pound or whatever. Like where is there like an impact? Yeah, sure, that, that that, that car needed a forever home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it's really hard to judge people because like some people, they would never even have to go there. You know, they can be like, fuck who they want. They no, always have right. money for food. But like if I, I don't know, I just don't Take think the it's car. any judgment. Have you ever been with a much older man? Mm hmm. I well, I probably the same situation. I thought you were about the hardcore change of subject. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's get back to the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, so I I feel I have a situation like. Okay, I when I was first came out really early twenties, I hooked up with this guy who was. Did you do it on the ice? We, we did it on the ice. Yeah, you yeah. came out. I on was the in ice. my full costume. <laughs> That's yeah. what they call the the rip on lust. That's right? what it Where is. You come out yeah. at the top of the move. And so um, we hooked up, and um, I remember that uh, he. I was like, okay, bye, and he looked at me, and he was like, "Can I give you like?" gas money oh. and I was like <laughs> I'm, I'm a slut and I said yeah y- yeah hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. Got boy. The gas money. I mean come on could- he had to like get his- and I was like I I, I I was like I hope he's not like a cop I'm like what happened in there 
Yeah, at the end, he's like, I'd like to make this a transaction if possible. <laughs> Do you have Venmo? Before you go, is there any way? One of the great regrets of my life is that I never slept with a much older woman. Um, and I'm older than you, honey. I know, and I've thought about it. Much thought, older, even. No. Uh, well, I, I've thought about it, and I've thought, you know, if, you know, as Natasha and I age together, that fantasy will come true, but then I'll be old, so probably it won't be the same fantasy. Mm. And I, I missed it by, I missed it by this much. No, five years doesn't count. Honey. Five years doesn't count. No, but it's I'm that saying twenty year gap. But you know, yeah. as as you age, you will eventually become a gilf, and I will no longer have to look it up. You know, but it won't be as <laughs> satisfying because I'll also be a gilf, or maybe I won't. I'll probably be a a gadilf, a, a grandfather I don't like to fuck. <laughs> and but I missed it by this much once. I was at, I was at a comedy club before i met you and two people propositioned me there was two girls and then there was a hot older woman like probably 65 like mm -hmm. la jolla like super millionaire gilf and i had a real it was a real a fetish off you know do i go with these two women uh -huh. or with this older woman and i i agonized about it and i decided two is always better than one i went with the two girls and i this got this is a really horrifying story honey. why it, i think it's really entertaining for the people okay. anyway it ends up with the uh, egg on my face because i got to the hotel room and the girl w was so uninterested in me like literally nothing happened they <laughs> it just was a full shutdown and the and i just got ignored in a hotel room and then went home so it it taught me the lesson always go for the gilf that is such a valuable lesson <laughs> and also when you're in your 20s people also in their 20s are poor Exactly. Mm -hmm. You're going to a, he's going to a house. I saw an article the other day and it was about a 20 year old who bought a house who won the lottery and it was like a news item. They're like a 20 year old finally, finally can afford a house. <laughs> <I> swear. <laughs> All she had to do was win the Ohio state lottery. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, take that gas money. Go for the gilf. Yeah. Desperation leads to innovation. All these beautiful <laughs> sayings that we've come up with today. Okay, well let's, let's take one more secret and then can we do the call because yeah, it's, I, I, I want to make sure we can get to it all. Hi, Natasha and Moshe. My secret is that I have sexual fantasies about my male bosses, and I didn't think this was like a thing. Take a number. This is only the second male boss that I've had in my career so far. But it happened with the first one, and it's happening now with the second one. And it must be some like weird thing that I have with like a male in power, because my boss Currently, my new boss is, like, not conventionally attractive. I am also married, uh, and I've been married for, like, seven years. So, yeah, it's just really weird. And, like, I would never act on it, but it's, like, really distracting <laughs> in my job. Um, and I haven't told my husband. I don't know if I should. And, again, I would never act on it, but um, they're, like really intense fantasies, sexual fantasies that I have. So, yeah, I don't know. I probably need therapy or something, but that's my secret. Nah. How I normal? How normal is this, Adam? Like, and, and, and how how much do we... You must have fantasized about, what was his name again? To, to, Lance Armstrong? To zero... <laughs> <laughs> to but about different things. <laughs> to zero... You, you know, zero Hanya? Yeah, you must have. Every I mean, he's day. The, he's the boss. In right, a way, he's, he's the, the boss. boss. He's my boss, yeah. <laughs> you, must have, no, you must have fantasized about the um, uh, International Olympic Committee at some point. Oh, yeah, point. Thomas Bach? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it healthy? I know his first and last name. But also, how do, how do like, actors, like, every time an A-list actor goes to a movie, they're, like, working with... With like a super hot person your, like mm. your theory is where you have to like be connected like it's got a be. lot of times hot people are boring though that that's is so true, true. That it's so true but at the same time like i'm sure out of like five movies you develop a connection with one person mm -hmm. right i don't know it just feels like <laughs> this feels like you setting up seeds for your is eventual your unfaithfulness <laughs> <laughs> you know when you go acting on movie, you don't do that a lot Moshe do you but anyway I do and it just feels but like I'm eventually to, an no. affair is gonna happen come on I'm talking about like you know people who are constantly in movies like I, I'm just saying it must be it's always a challenge to, I, it's I, healthy right I think it's totally normal and I think what amplifies it is when you go I shouldn't be thinking this oh, totally. and then it gets, it gets like, hotter it gets hotter and hotter <gasps> totally oh right so, so you actually think they're a little more attractive than you actually do think they are well the, the fantasy the, becomes bigger and bigger in your right. mind which is why I think what you're getting to is this woman should fuck her boss or try 
Bring, <laughs> no. yes. bring 29 chicken strips to work one day. <laughs> because and say, 30 is prostitution. 30 is too many and say, do yeah. you want to milk me? Mm-hmm. That's the only answer here. I agree. Uh, I, I think she, she seemed very confident that she wasn't going to act on it. And I think it's healthy and maybe there's a way to use it. All in good yeah. fun. I think that she just likes the authority of it all. Mm-hmm. And I think that like she could probably do something with her husband and maybe do like a little mm-hmm. role play. And I think that like um, the having the fantasies thing, it it's just it's a normal thing. And I think probably in her own mind, she's probably trying to talk it down and it just like keeps totally. boiling up to the surface. That's a good idea. Tell your bo- tell your husband to pretend to be your boss and you can be like, oh, Greg, assistant regional manager at Auto Parts, <laughs> uh, 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 Illinois. Give it to me hard. You know, exactly. Something like that. That could be hot. All right, and you well, can do that with uh, some of your co uh, co stars in some of the movies that you're in. With all the tension. But yeah, with me, whatever, <laughs> whoever it was that was creating the tension that caused you to make that. Uh, it was me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm just saying, I think it's healthy. Was there any sexual tension from anybody on Stars on Mars? Did you feel any of that? No. 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 Nobody. No. Sh- even Shatner. Lance asked me to throw away his garbage one day. Oh, that's pretty hot. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> that's pretty good. That's what's called milking in the, in the Martian community. <laughs> no, in Aspen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do another call. Okay, we're going to do one more call. We're going to call Beth. Beth in Montreal. Hey, honeymooners. Have you ever tried hop water? Hop water is my new go to beverage this summer. It is non alcoholic, it is sparkling, it tastes delicious. And I love it. Whether you're trying not to drink, maybe you've been sober for 20 years like Moshe, give it a try. I recommend starting with their variety pack. It's a great way to try four of their most popular flavors. And for someone who doesn't drink, it's a great way to enjoy a happy hour with family and friends without feeling like you're missing out. It tastes great. And it's just the thing I was looking for. Hop water, spelled H-O-P-W-T-R, is so refreshing and full of hoppy flavor and mood-boosting benefits. It lets us celebrate any moment from noon to night. Plus, hop water is purposefully crafted without calories, carbs, or sugar. So we can make bold moves like raising a can whenever we want. We know you'll love hop water, too. You just need to try it out. Having people over, I'd like to keep them in the fridge. People come over, they don't drink. I give some people a glass of wine, and then some people who don't drink, I offer them the four flavors of hop water. It's amazing. I love it. And I've heard everybody talking about it, so that's why I started buying it. And now, they are a sponsor. I'm so excited. I love when it happens like that. Right now, we have a special offer just for our listeners. You can get 20% off your first purchase. This is a deal. Plus, get free shipping when you order 24 cans or more. To get this offer, go now to our special URL, hopwater, H-O-P-W-T-R dot com slash honeymoon. That's H-O-P-W-T-R dot com slash honeymoon. Don't wait. This offer won't last long. H-O-P-W-T-R dot com slash honeymoon. How oh, international. I love it. We've had we've had real international. We've had we've had where are we at Saudi Arabia. We've had Israel. We've had all Middle Eastern. But oh, <laughs> Beth, what's what's up, Beth? Hello, how are you? Good. Hey, Beth. It's Natasha, Moshe, and our friend Adam Rapon. Hi, Beth. Hi, 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 hi. How's it going? How's Montreal? Pretty good. Very nervous. I won't lie. You're <laughs> nervous uh, to be talking to us. Yes. Oh, well, if you knew what we've been talking about, we've been talking about whether 30 chicken strips uh, for a hand job constitutes prostitution. <laughs> Does that bring your nerves down a bit? I got, yeah. <laughs> what, what's your answer? Um, yeah. Would, yeah. You, would yeah. you fuck a guy in your 20s for food? No, he's giving you a hand job. Let's be clear. <laughs> He's giving me a hand job. Yeah, yes. he's giving you a hand No, you're giving you. him a hand job. No, he's milking you. So you you put your chest through two holes in a massage table. And, and he, he has you. a house. He That's has a, a house. He, it's on a golf course. He's much older, but he's still kind of hot, like kind of like a sitcom dad. And I'm getting really good food or I'm only getting chicken strips? You're getting Whataburger. Do you have that in Montreal? <laughs> probably not. It's probably illegal. <laughs> um, 
Maybe for like a lobster dinner, I'd do it. Okay, I like that. Yeah. I like that she. And that's another thing for Whataburger. I think he should raise his prices. That is true. The next like, next time that guy calls, he should say Sizzler or bust, or or Sizzler or no bust. Exactly. It was before inflation. <laughs> that's yes, right. that's true. All right. Now that we've really sort of calmed your nerves with our um, disgusting and and vile questioning, how can we help? Okay, so. I have a bit of a long-winded question, but basically... Well, we have seven my- minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, my sister and I, we have each been in our relationships for about three years now. Um, in a funny turn of events, we both met our boyfriends at the exact same time. Um, unfortunately, they do not like each other, which, fine, I could move past that. But now they... Like, recently we went home, and my sister and I, we brought our partners, and her boyfriend like very greatly insulted our mother uh, so much so that she almost punched him in the face. Whoa. What'd he do? What'd he say? He accused her of like pounding back whiskey and then attempting to drive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Arguably that is funny. Go on. <laughs> Which was just ridiculous. I thought it was, he was joking at first. Cause I'm mm. like, obviously not. Um, but of course my sister wasn't there. He gave her a different story. So she doesn't think that that's what's you that's heard what's it. Is this, is this, you were there? Yeah, he said it to me and to my boyfriend, so we have witnesses. And who almost um, punched him in the face? Your mom? My mom almost punched She's him. She's like, I'm not whiskey drunk. I'll punch you in the <laughs> fucking jaw, bitch. <laughs> I'm a little bit yeah. on his side now. <laughs> he can um, but right after that, they got engaged. And uh. this is kind of a relationship that I thought that I could wait out. Mm. For me. She's yeah. given all of the negative information like I know all the fights that they've had and it's just as a sister I've had a hard time kind of not disliking him for what I've heard but it's he's also kind he's rude to me and to my partner and Mm. so like for myself I can put that aside I can pick my battles my partner has a bit of a a harder time doing that he's he has a really hard time being fake around people um but she'll like she'll tell me all these horrible things or not horrible that's that's dramatic But she'll tell me what she's struggling with in her relationship, which is her right. She's my sister. It's important to vent. And then she still wants me to, like, want to go for double dates with her and, like, be happy to spend time with him. And I've been just, like, not including my boyfriend in that. And I've been doing it by myself. But now that she's marrying him, I don't know what to do anymore. And I've tried to put boundaries in place where it's like, how about we keep the guys separate? Like, just focus on the sister relationship. And she basically said that I would see her less Mm. if that's what I wanted. And so I'd get less sister time. And that's not what I want. Like, I love my sister. So how do I deal with her and her partner while also like keeping boundaries for myself and my partner? And like, how do I be a good sister to her while also not neglecting my relationship? Oh, this is good. And we don't have any answers for you. But let's get back to that (laughs) Whataburger thing. I mean, what is prostitution? And what are chicken strips (laughs) worth these days? Well, one thing I will say is that, you know, in terms of your husband or your partner and her partner not getting along, you know, there is something to just having a very conscious effort when you're around each other. Mm -hmm. And you can share this with your husband. Like, let's just try to like really almost like as a mental exercise. Let's make sure we don't activate. Let's make sure we don't get into a fight. Let's be our best selves around this situation when we're all there because I know the stress of like, it's not just you. It's like he's now that could, that could cause you guys to get into a fight, you and your partner, because he's in a fight with your sisters, whatever. So it's like, I get that. So it's just having a very present mind when you go into the foursome situation or whatever. And also, you know, maybe, I don't know, the, the insulting thing is a little challenging because what if that happens more and, yeah. yeah. Does 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 he let the sis, does she let the sister know that was inappropriate? Adam, what do you think? I think that um you know, I think if you have a conversation with your sister and say that like I would like to do things one on one and if she comes mm-hmm. back to you and says, "Well, then that's kind of your choice because then you'll see me less." It's not. That's her choice. And mm-hmm. I think that like um, if you could set that in place, like, you you know, you're her sister, you're going to support her in whatever she's doing. But that doesn't mean that you have to like this, her partner. And yeah. if you don't, you don't need to put yourself in a situation where you're trying to do something nice for her. Like you don't need to do that to yourself. And if she's not willing to make the time to see you separately of this person, then that is on her 
to not do that. That's not something that you've done. It's also tricky, though, because we will set a time for just the two of us to hang out and then he'll show up. Like her boyfriend. Oh, I, I mean, listen, that. it'll be explicitly- she's in a bad relationship. I mean, she, yeah. this guy sucks, obviously. Like, who would say that about someone's mom? Like, the you know, one of the first times you're meeting them, like, you know, she's clearly got something she's going through. And, and how how much can you be there for her? How much can you be involved? You you know, you tell her you don't you don't like the guy. That's not going to help. It's, it's just going to make her feel defensive. So you really you have to there's so much surrender that has to happen in this, I feel like, mm. on your part. And you obviously care about it because you're calling the world's best <laughs> three <laughs> greatest <laughs> therapists. Yep. I'm stepping in for yep. mm-hmm. one of them. Yeah, I you keep using the words. I've been thinking about this since you started. You keep using the words boundaries, right? And you t- want to set boundaries. And what's interesting here is that your sister has already set one. Now, it's not a good one, but it's true. She said, here's the information you've got. If you want to hang out just with me and keep uh, these units separate, you're going to see me less. That's her boundary. Now, is it a healthy boundary? Uh, uh, probably not, but it's just true. It's out now. You now know. Now you have the information. You're supplied with the information. If you want to see her just one on one, then you're going to see her less than you want to, and less than you're used to. Um, and if you, uh, I, I, I kind of think it's a misnomer how much the two boys dislike each other. I think that's like less in- interesting information than what's going on with you and your sister. Like your sister's in a relationship with somebody you don't like. It's a classic situation. She, they mar- I mean, this happens so often. The person that you love marries someone you c- kind of have a difficult time being around. And now you got to figure out how to rejigger your relationship with that person in order to honor your relationship and not make it so that because here's what's going to happen. You go, okay, I'll just do full bore. I'll do it your, on your terms. Your relationship with your sister is going to, is going to become fucked up because you're going to be around. You're going to be resentful towards her. Your part, both your partners are going to be fighting with each other. This relationship is going to be altered for sure, no matter what you do, right? It just is. Like, you're, there's no way out. She's with someone you don't like. You're, you're, it's done. So now you got, you got to go, how do I salvage the sister relationship, which is actually the most important relationship, how do I salvage that within the framework that I have to work with? I don't want to leave my partner. Uh, I want to be with my partner. He doesn't get along with her partner. I don't like her boyfriend, so I don't want to spend tons of time with the two of us. So what you do, is my opinion, you t- take her boundary and you find a way to see her less, but to, uh, but to see her with quality. Because seeing her <laughs> as much as you want it's just going to create anguish and a disappearing relationship anyway because you're going to be like, fuck this guy. Why am I around this guy? But isn't she saying kind of fuck this guy by only seeing the sister sometimes? The, and won't that create stress in her sister's relationship? Well, brings, like, he doesn't. she doesn't want to hang out with you. That brings me to my next thought, uh, which is you should stop mentioning that you don't like this guy. I think that's already mm. established law. And I think we everybody mm. knows that. And it's only, if you want to save your relationship with your sister, the way to do that is to not keep saying, I think your fiance sucks. Because yeah. it's like, he does suck and you're, you're stuck in that situation. She's going to have to come to that realization on her own or maybe she never will. Is she so- your younger sister? No, older. Do you feel like this guy is just like kind of like hot and has manipulated her or what's or she's just like really physically attracted to him? She's definitely attracted to him. I think that he helped her in a way that she needed to because she started her own business and he helped her with a lot of like the IT surrounding that. That's cool, though. And that's something to focus on for you. You know, like he's helped her. He's helping her accomplish things that she was he was like a missing piece and maybe she's more you know she's more excited about it but don't you think somehow trying to focus on the good of him so. as well Adam what do you think Yeah I mean have you ever hung out with this boyfriend just the two of you Ooh, like have mm-hmm. you ever tried to do a situation like that where your sister wasn't there and he was? This feels inappropriate. No, I like this. I think this is smart. I didn't tell her to fuck her sister. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, and honestly Whenever I'm around them, mm. like the way that I kind of get by in in the visit is kind of just being quiet. Like I'll focus on my sister and I'll talk to them a little bit. But he's shown me that he has no problem interrupting me, ignoring me if the conversation isn't like interesting to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, he helped her with the business. That was wonderful. But now he's kind of like he's made her doubt herself as well. And mm. he's also he's been a he's helped her, but he's also not helped her. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, just like, 
I struggle. I struggle. I have to this say, like, I, I have family members and sometimes they need help. And I feel like sometimes I help them and I do stuff and I'm like, let's just mess things up for them. Yeah, I think sometimes the they hardest thing, thing, the hardest thing is to see somebody you care about. Y you have to, like, let them make their own yeah. mistakes. Yes. Otherwise, they become upset with you for you telling them something that they already know. Like, she, your sister already knows that her fiance is saying rude things to your mom she yeah. already knows <laughs> that like right right so i she already knows that and i think that like you can let her know as much as you want her to but if she doesn't want to budge like you can just be there to support her and then the repercussions of that are her own fault yeah i i, I think adam is exactly spot on there is no way for you there is no good solution here like that's always I always when I that's take so these hard. calls, I'm like, what's the practice? And in life, it's not just these calls in my life in general. And I'm trying to make a decision. I'm like, I'm trying to like do this equation, which is, you know, what what is this relationship worth? You know, mm -hmm. I, when I used to date, I would say that, you know, this the level of toxicity and the level of affection I have for this person. How much is this worth? Now, you have a sister, so it's like worth kind of everything. It, it's worth, it's worth it, more. It's worth it all. Right. You, no matter what, you have to maintain well, it depends your on how many sisters you have. <laughs> yeah. Do you have more sisters? <laughs> that kind of changes everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, only sister. So it's worth it all. So now you go, OK, I don't have a good solution because this guy's around. I mean, hoping for a divorce, that's no solution because you don't know that it'll happen. You're not in control of it. Uh, hoping it'll fall apart. I mean, it's just, that's, that's, you can't bank on that. What you can bank on is what she's telling you is true. I'm going to marry this person and if you want to only spend time with me and not him, it's going to mean that I see you less. So now you got a decision to make. Do you see her all the time in a situation where you're biting your tongue and feeling resentment? Because that's what you have right now. You are burning with resentment for this person who probably deserves it. But it doesn't really matter because resentment is always poison. Whether they say resentment is taking poison, hoping the other person dies, right? So it's like it, you have resentment. You, you got to, in my opinion, work on that resentment, find a way to find him tolerable if possible. That's why I liked Adam's idea of maybe get coffee with him, find out what's lovable about him. Even you'll never like him, but you might hate him less. And, and that could be important. And then just do, do the thing that your sister's saying. Like you love your sister, see her less, but see her with more quality, I think. And stop saying, I hate your boyfriend because I think she knows that. And just like, be, be lucky that you have this good partner and that you don't have a partner like your sister does and try to love her for where she's at, which is not where you want it to be, but that's what you got. She's your sister. There she is. And with that then, like, I definitely can do that. Like, I've been trying to put myself aside. It's been it's three years we're into this relationship mm -hmm. or these relationships. But then, like, with my partner, do I ask him to spend time with these this man that I know makes him uncomfortable do I continue to leave him outside of that? Like I think I think you could do like one one event a quarter. Yeah, that sounds re reasonable. Yeah. Four times a year. You know, like you don't say that. But like in your head, it's like you don't want to be psycho about it. Like, oh, no, he can't come. But like if there's like a family thing, if there's you need the support, if there's, you know, it's just less. Mm -hmm. It's it's less but and more with your sister and, you know, try to not get too. Uh, her life is her life and she's going to do her thing and you don't want it to like put a downer on your relationship and. I, I wish there was like more solid advice, but I, I do think some of this stuff is like a mental, it, it's a discipline. Almost, it's, yeah, like mentally disciplining a, yourself to not say anything bad about him when you're around her. Like that's really hard. To try. Yeah, and you know, sometimes, I know that this isn't healthy, but sometimes when I'm in a situation like this, I like to collect like ammunition so that if your sister ever gets mad at you, you can be like, well, I did all the right things. Like I met, I met with him one-on-one. -on -one. I tried to get to know him. I did this so that like, if it comes to a boiling point, you never, she can never be like, you didn't try or you didn't do this. Like, so if I'm in a situation where I feel like this is all gonna come to a head one day, let me collect all of the ammunition. I don't want to go on a, like a one-on-one. -on -one. I don't want to like invite him over and, and me and my boyfriend who doesn't like him anyway, but I'm doing it to collect ammunition. And sometimes <laughs> yeah. that is an easier way for me to do That's it so that when it comes to a head, you're like, well, what do you want me to do? I did everything that I was supposed to do. I did everything to try to make something out of it. Yep. And sometimes when I'm collecting the ammunition, it actually works yeah. when you're like trying to do something, right? I think that, and That's I think, cool. I think going down that road is like trying to put yourself in the mind frame 
of like healthy person when you spend time with this person because you can go in the mind frame you can arrive going oh this is gonna suck and i'm gonna fucking get into a fight with him or you can go okay there's a person i'm about to hang out with that i don't like what are the best practices for me when i'm entering the situation maybe i smoke maybe i smoke a joint before i get there so that i'm a little bit like not focused on what's going on maybe i stay at a hotel and make sure i never stay at the same hotel as them so i can always be like Two hours in, okay, we're going to go back to the hotel. Yeah, what works for it's you? What, like just making a strategy because and, and you, the way you can tell where you need to do that is like what are the major trigger points? Yeah, you know, totally. like like for me, like I when I go home to see my mom, I I, I do feel like if Moshe is spending the night, like that's just going to make it so much more challenging. That I'm like, okay, for that, like we've got to get a hotel. Yeah. We've got you know, like so I, I you know finding the little areas that and then and one more one more thing I've been thinking about is like your job is not to manage your partner's uh, resentment for your sister's fiance. Totally. He's his own man. He's a grown up. He can deal with that. You, your Ask job, him for advice. He needs yeah. to help. Your job is to say what Adam said, like, hey, I need, or maybe Natasha was saying it, I need support in this family gathering. Will you come with me? It's not yeah, to manage. Yeah, I was manage- saying ammunition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's strange though, because with that, then, my partner, he's very happy to put himself aside and like just support me. He's he's wonderful. But with the the situation where this man insulted my mom, then because there was no witnesses, my mom wasn't there, my sister wasn't there to see it. He then said that my boyfriend set a trap and that he got what he wanted out of breaking the relationship with my mom and him. I'm like, listen, how are just... you listening to my boyfriend for this? Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, this guy. Listen, you you guys don't like the guy. He's he sucks. He's, he sucks. Yeah, he sounds like he thinks he's funny. Like mm, that cutting you it. off and like saying these off the cuff things like he's in the sucks category. That's <laughs> I mean, you can't get out of that. And now she's decided to marry him. Like th- there is no world. There is no way that this is pleasant in every way for you. You can't get that. Do you have a spiritual practice? Do you like meditate or chant or anything? No, I tell myself I will and I don't. Well. Mm. That's a practice in and of itself. <laughs> I chant that like, to myself. I will someday it's meditate. Nice, it's nice yeah. to have like a, a practice where it's like where you chant or meditate or think about like how to get to be your best self to deal with this situation. I think I I think I I can I think I've got because it's not in your control. Yeah, that's I think, the hard part. I think I've got the the dilemma here. Your focus is how are you going to fix this situation, make him suck less, make your partner and him have less friction, make your sister be different and not like him in the same way, make make everybody's boundaries be correct. That is lost. You cannot do that. Your focus should now shift to how can I enter into a situation that is less than ideal and s- escape from it with as little karmic and drama damage as I can. Like that should be the focus. The focus is Not isn't- like did you hear telling another person what mm-hmm. he said about your mom. He sucks. He sucks. He's you in, know, like just that's sucks. just focusing on the negative part of it. So, yeah, yeah, how do you get through an interaction with him where you're not steaming with resentment, where your partner and him aren't fighting, where it's just like the whole thing about him insulting your mom, I just hear that. I go, yeah, the guy sucks. We already know that. Yeah. He sucks. What, what you're are you probably hypersensitive to everything oh, yeah. because you're just on edge of like, what the fuck is he going to say yep. next? You can only control your own experience. Like when you go into these things, like you can't worry about your sister's yep. feelings. You can't worry about his feelings or your partner's feelings. Like you can create the best experience for yourself. Mm-hmm. And obviously that means when everybody gets along and whatever, but like if you just focus on like getting the most out of your own time when you're together or when you're in these situations, it becomes a lot less stressful because you're not trying to navigate the situation so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And he's probably like, you know, really going down on her in a great way. (laughs) Think about that. (laughs) Honestly, think about that. You know, when he says something offensive, think about the sexual pleasure he brings her. And that'll really get you to a good place. I feel like probably getting that pussy (laughs) eight. Okay. Listen, Beth, good luck. And maybe your new meditation, since you can't do the, you can't, you can't sit down to meditate or chant. You can do like more of like a bhakti Hindu. Like I'm going to enter into this very challenging situation. Mm -hmm. That should be a meditation enter into a challenging situation and try to just like not suppress but try to just like mutate things into the best possible you know al- alchemist version yeah. and and focusing on 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 whatever you can that is positive about this person so that you're not steaming with focus on how awful he is all the time it's very difficult to do 
In AA, they used to say, pray for the people you have a resentment for. I mean, I don't really believe in the power of prayer, but I believe in the, the concept of that idea. It's like, if I just like try to infuse compassion towards a person that I hate, eventually maybe I will hate them a little bit less. I would less. love to see you do that, Moshe. I've done it. In my in my long past, anyway. All right, I'm, Beth. Well, good luck. Yeah, good luck. This is hard, really hard. The situation, but really I is. like where your energy is, and it seems like you, you know, you care so much about it, and this will be fun. And I, I bet it's it's just having more mindfulness in yeah. the situations. Yeah, it'll be fine. Just don't make it more dramatic in your own mind. Yes, than it yes. needs to be. Totally. Uh, thank you, guys. Yeah, you're welcome. Good All right. luck. Bye, hun. Yeah, that's a tough one. That is a tough. She was that, so sweet. She was, was sweet. so sweet. I mean, it's funny because I I have a bias for the people that call us, but I just believe her. <laughs> like, I just think this <laughs> oh, guy yeah. sucks. I think he's whack. But there's nothing you can do. There's just no. nothing you can do. You just it's like such a common thing that you're with. You have this great family unit, and then all of a sudden, romance happens, and you're like, "Whoa, you're in my family now." I I now all of a sudden I have a horrible brother just some guy you met at a bar and he's now my horrible brother that's at every family gathering talking shit about my mom it sucks I remember I had a best friend when I was like 15 and she had sex with her boyfriend which obviously terrified me and her boyfriend who was also 15 had a kid already and I was like, you need to Some like Pennsylvania, sh- Pennsylvania. Sh- <laughs> I was like, you need to stop, like stop. And I really interject interjected myself mm. and she got really upset. Um, long story short, she's still with that guy. He's really nice. I never got had tried to meet him. They have their own kid. And the kid that he had is like a great kid. Yeah. I have, there was a couple. And you were like, you got it. And I was like, you got to end it. There was They've a, been together for 20 years. That's so, amazing. Yeah, it's there amazing. Was, there was a couple uh, in my friendship circle in the Bay Area that was together and then they broke up. And then the girl said to another friend of mine, we broke up and she goes, "Ugh, thank God. I fuck, I never liked him for you. He's the worst. Well, of course, a month later, they got back together. They are still together. In fact, mm-hmm. And it was just this thing. And their relationship has never been the same. It's like this right. thing where like, it's so difficult when it's your sister, but it's just, you gotta fucking, I, you, unless it's abuse. Totally. Up, you gotta just bite your tongue and accept that sometimes people's pickers are bad and they just don't like good people. That or is the they way need it is. something. She needed some, uh, you know, help. IT tech, <laughs> IT support. She just needed a little <laughs> IT support with her <laughs> new she, business. She, she, what she should have done is got her, a, got her a, 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 um, a Best Buy Geek Squad subscription <laughs> and she could have avoided this whole mess. All right. Well, Adam, I thought you had great advice. You're such a wow. great guy and funny, charismatic, a, one of the best at the Rippon Lutz <laughs> in, in, in the world. We got to see this Rippon Lutz I'm in I want to look it up tonight. Guaranteed. Okay, listen, if you have a call, a question, whatever it's called, I don't know. Advice. If you, yeah. <laughs> if you want some advice. Well, but it says good secrets night. at the t- <laughs> Yeah, good night, everybody. Yeah, give us a call. 213-222-8608. Leave your secrets. And endlesshoneymoonpod at gmail for advice, questions. And Adam, where can they find you? Do you got anything coming up you want to plug? Stars on Mars. Stars, Stars on Mars. Mars. Oh. Now on Fox, on streaming Fox. on Hulu. Yep. Yes. I'm some still Martian on Mars. Too. And look for him in his next uh, TV show. Yeah, I mean, you're a star, Adam. I I, it's it, it's obvious, and it always was. Wow! All right. I think you should fuck your sister. <laughs> I'm on my way there. <laughs> I'm gonna get there. All right. Thanks. <laughs>